staring through the window and being able to see some of the students. So they're going into class right now. And how long is that class and how long until they come back out? 35 minutes. 35 yeah. minutes. And there's like yeah. two or three classes in the morning. Yeah. So they've already been to three classes. They had break and snack and now they have three, two more and then lunch. So it's an um, action packed day. Yeah. It so is. If we're still talking in 35 minutes. You'll, you'll see them. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to welcome everybody back to Alabama care. Today we are at, um, Unless you, and we're going to be talking about the academics, uh, the life and social skills, the uh, electives, and the vocational support. And we have Mrs. Mary Grace Sourman, hope I said that correctly, uh, the marketing development coordinator, and Mrs. Meredith Binkley, the program director here at Unless You. And at this point, I'd like to hand it over. Mrs. Mary Grace, if you would introduce yourself. Hey, so my name is Mary Grace Sourman. Good job pronouncing that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, and I've been at Unless You for about three or four years. Um, I graduated from Stanford and kind of interned here whenever I was in college and quickly fell in love with the program and the students. Um, and I've been here ever since and now have kind of transitioned into a marketing and development role. Yeah. I've heard that before, like the best the best opportunity for getting employment with a company is start off with an internship and start off when you're in school or kind of right after that and get your yeah. foot in the door there. Yeah. So. We have, we have several, several employees that have kind of, um, done the same like transition that I have. And it's also good from unless you side or any like organization side, cause it's a free, you know, trial run basically yeah. for, for a future employee. So yeah, you guys get, um, uh, get to feel each other out there. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, Meredith, if you, if you would introduce yourself. Yeah. So I'm Meredith Binkley. I'm the program director and I'm the ice cream lady. Um, <laughs> it's probably the best way <laughs> to describe it. Um, my story is a little bit different than Mary Grace. I went to Auburn and started with unless you back last spring. Um, my first day was actually the day we moved in this building and I'm not sure you could have a more chaotic <laughs> first day um, there were lots of questions and lots of me smiling and nodding and going I don't know what what's <laughs> going on um, but have fallen in love with it um, I have a background in youth ministry and camp ministry and said so, um, just got to open some doors here and really pumped to be here and so I stepped into this new role uh, back in January doing programming and working with our teachers and our our students and it's been a lot of fun yeah well we appreciate you guys spending the morning with us and informing the audience about everything that unless you does now i'd like to dig in um the marketing and development coordinator what exactly is that position and what does it do here at unless you um so it's evolving um in the past year we've grown from about 12 staff members to almost 30 um and so a lot of those are part-time um, teaching positions but lindy our executive director founder She's out on maternity leave, but um, she's done a really good job of just kind of like seeing a need as we've grown and kind of tailoring everyone's gifts and talents um, to kind of make a position. But um, right now I do our website, social media. Um, we have a big event called Unless You Got Talent coming up. And so really focusing on fundraising events. Uh, and I got to give you props on the website. Uh, awesome website, by the Thanks. way. So Thanks. it looks very nice. Uh, and Meredith, what, did, what exactly does the program director do here at Unless You? Yeah, so kind of like Mary Grace said, Lindy has seen lots of needs with the growth over the last year. And so Mary Grace was being superwoman and handling everything from marketing to programming directing to billing and, and, and outreach. She was handling everything. And so um, when Lindy went out on maternity leave, she kind of divided and conquered some roles. And um, that let Mary Grace really focus on the fundraising and the marketing side of it. And so I stepped in and now I do the programming side. So I do the newsletter. I work with our teachers, um, scheduling. I still run scoops and, and that aspect of everything. Um, so I was in the classroom before and now I'm still in the classroom a little bit, but do more of the admin type stuff. Um, and I think it's it's been a great fit and a great transition too to take stuff off her plate so she can actually work with our donors um, and I can work with staff and we can kind of divide and conquer. Sounds like you guys are wearing a bunch of different hats. <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing. It yeah. is, it's good. We don't know what we did without Meredith or like when we were less than a year ago, it was pretty much just Lindy and I. Um, and so it's the Lord has just provided each person and we all have different gifts and talents and it just kind of works 
together and make this awesome team. Yeah, that's explosive growth when you're talking about 12 staff members from a year ago to 30 today. Yeah. Um, really and in order to get that, you have to have a solid crew of team members at the beginning that are all vibing together um, and that can be flexible together. Because uh, you don't know, you know, how old is Unless You? Um, seven years. Seven years. So still kind of a young company. Yeah. And when it's a young company, you're not sure exactly what year after year is going to look like. So you have to be able to navigate that and mm -hmm. be flexible in what that looks like moving forward. And it's so mm -hmm. crucial to have that core member, uh, yeah. team members there. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for Lindy, congratulations, uh, Mrs. Cleveland on the, uh, the baby. I don't know if son yeah, or baby number two, baby number two. Um, but you know, for your team to be able to step up and kind of take on those other roles is really cool for me yeah. to see as a business owner. Yeah. Uh, so I cool. wish, I wish Lindy was here to join cause she's superwoman behind it all. Mm -hmm. Um, really, really incredible, but, um, she's done something really special. So. So, so why are you passionate about this work? Mary Grace? Um, so I majored in human development at Sanford, um, and had no idea that I, would fall in love with this population or unless you um and need an internship and reached out to lindy and she was quick to let me come super flexible and um quickly fell in love and realized that this was kind of the lord's calling on my life and um you know a lot of people like have family members that have disabilities or have some connection but i really had no connection um and within a few weeks of being here i was like oh my gosh, these are the most special people in the whole world. And Unless You is a really, really special place. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm super grateful that, um, you know, as early as I did in college, a lot of people will graduate and then work a bunch of different jobs and are super unsatisfied. But I feel super, super fortunate that I was able to, to find a place as awesome as this and to like really find my calling. Yeah. Feel at home there. It sounds yeah. like you feel like those that you serve do more for you than you do for them, uh, in a way there. Yeah. I, I think we would, we would all say that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Meredith, what's kind of your calling to this community? So, I mean, kind of like Mary Grace, I don't have any family members with any disabilities. Um, and yet I really feel like when you walk through the doors here, you just fall in love with our students and you fall in love with their families. And so, um, like I said, my first day on the job, was watching the joy of all of our students and all of our families coming in this building for the first time. And so it was chaotic and it was crazy and it was loud and it was fun. And yet it was undeniable that God was doing big things. And then you sit down with Lindy and you hear just her vision and how God put it in her heart, you know, growing up and then the story at Sanford and, and launching unless you with six students around her parents' kitchen table. And now you look at, we have almost a hundred families here that's incredible. Um, and I don't think for any of our staff and any of our families, you, know, you can deny that God is just doing big things. And how could you not want to be a part of that? Yeah. It's a vibe here for sure. Mm -hmm. Like when you come in, everybody's having fun. Now, when I, when we came in, everybody was in their classrooms, but as soon as they get a break from the classroom, everybody's out here, they're having fun. It's a party. They're singing. It it's a party. Yeah. Uh, so you said loud and fun. And that's kind of what I see here. Yeah. Very welcoming yes. uh, for anybody that walks through that door. Yes. Um, I don't go ahead. think that we mentioned this. Um, but if you aren't familiar with Unless You, we've talked about Lindy. Um, Lindy has an older brother, Jordan, with Down syndrome. And she started Unless You for her brother once she graduated from Sanford. Um, started in her parents' house with six students and has grown. We can tell more of the story later. Yeah, so but, let's, let's dig into that. What's kind of the history behind Unless You there? Um, and what exactly is Unless You for anybody that's unfamiliar? Yeah. Do you want to kind of... Yeah, I... That? Um, yeah, so I'll cover that part. So unless you, we are a school for adults with disabilities and we have almost a hundred families who are a part of our program and students can come Monday through Friday. Um, we have academic classes in the morning. We have electives in the afternoon. Um, Lindy has a passion for ice cream as well as unless you. So we also have an ice cream shop, which, um, kind of functions as a transitional point from our job in our life skills class where we serve ice cream and our students work and gain those job and life skills, um, as well. And so, uh, for us, you know, we started, like we said, in Lindy's parents' kitchen, and then we were at Shades for several years, and God just opened doors for basically a building that could home our program, and um, this has become home for us. You know, we, we come every day, and the students love it, and they're so proud of it. Um, it's really fun to see 
them take ownership over their school building and to come go to class and they had their lockers and um, we have electives everything from basketball to art to they can go work at scoops to gym and fitness um, it's really horseback a riding. horseback <laughs> horseback riding Sorry, I will week. totally let Mary Grace <laughs> take on um, but they get to take ownership over their college experience and I think that's one of the coolest things being a part of scoops is having folks come into the ice cream shop who really don't know anything about what's happening on the on the other side of the wall behind us mm -hmm. and to have our students go oh yeah that's like that's my college you know and um to see them take that pride in their experience here it's just it's a lot of fun and then of course they go off and talk about basketball and horseback riding and um all over ice cream which so it's it, it sells itself mm -hmm. to anybody who comes in the door but yeah, mary grace can give more of the background and the history from from day one yeah go ahead if you'd like to tell a little bit about so it's just one second. We're going to reset the microphones there. Um, <clears throat> the wireless mics. My mic is still hot. So I love the fact that you're describing it as like a school for adults because in this community, I feel like many after the age of 21 in high school, the, the typical education system, mm -hmm. they try, you know, they'll try and get a job or they'll try and be active. But a lot of times I've heard stories of just sitting at home with mm -hmm. the family. Um, and that can be stressful for the individual, can be stressful for uh, the parents and yeah. the family there. So for the opportunity for individuals to continue with what they're comfortable with, which is going to school, being around their peers, those mm -hmm. types of things, um, it's an easy transition for them. Yeah. You so know? two things that kind of set us apart from other programs in Birmingham and Alabama, um, we are the only program that offers continuing education. Um, so we create a college-like atmosphere where they have classes in the morning and then electives like Meredith was just talking about. And then another thing, um, our students don't age out. So after they graduate, they are able to come to Unless You and stay as long as it's a good fit for them and their families. Mm -hmm. um, some programs, you know, are like the college-like programs. Um, students can age out and then they're kind of in the same predicament that they were when they graduated high school. Um, so yeah. we have students that are range from 18 and I think our oldest students 52, um, That's awesome. and everything in between. Yeah. When you think about it as like a, a college there, that was a question I was going to ask is, is it, there's there an end date to that? Is yeah. there a graduation ceremony, something like that? Mm -hmm. So it makes me think of kind of like a day habilitation area. Um, but, uh, that comes with a lot of like institutional talk, what it used to be. So I have a family member, she's 57 and she used to be in an institution in Partlow mm -hmm. in Tuscaloosa and the typical day activities there were like, you know, working with screws and bolts, that kind mm -hmm. of thing, and not really engaging much and learning much yeah. and to see what how this community has transformed over the last 20 years mm -hmm. to you know this is being like a model um for what's possible for yeah. for this mm -hmm. community is really cool to see and we're both blown away when we walked in so congratulations right. on everything Thank that you, you guys are doing um now for maybe somebody an individual or, or a family wondering uh, what are the hours and days of services that they can come here and be part of the program um, so we're open five days a week. Our typical hours are from 8.30 um, to about 3, 3.30. Um, and we have early care starting at 7.30 um, and then aftercare all the way until 6 for parents that, that work. That work a little bit yeah. later. So it's really a full day that individuals can come here and be mm -hmm. active. Mm -hmm. Now, how many um, people would you say take uh, part in the early part of the day? Um, we probably have like 10 to 15 you take part in that early part mm -hmm. and less in the afternoon um maybe like eight ish okay. there you go to get yeah home. yeah and they're they're worn out by the they are the worn out <laughs> so so aftercare is mainly just hanging out um but i mean we have a jam pack a jam pack day every day so what does um, a typical day look like so and we start academics in the morning at nine mm -hmm. um they have class from 9 to about 12, 15, um, five classes, and they rotate every 35 minutes um, with the break that y'all saw a little earlier at 1020. Um, they all come out into the main area for a snack and a morning meeting. We say the pledge and um, pray, and then we have an unless you quote that we say every day. Um, and then lunch, and then in the afternoons, some go to work at Scoops, and then um, they all scatter to their different electives. Yeah. So some of the classes, what's being taught this morning in, in some of these classes, in the five classes? I, I peeked in and saw a couple you know, stuff on the, <laughs> yes. on the boards there, but 
Yeah, so we really focus on academics in the morning. So like right now they're doing history and Bible. Um, we have science some days, math, job and life skills, our core curriculum. Uh, but if you were to come in the summer, our summers are themed. Um, we try to take a little bit of a break from the academic side of it during the summer. So our summer, this summer is actually 90s themed. So you'll have everything from like 90s music and TV to video games um, and still incorporating the academic side of it. But you know, maybe it's Math Blaster and, you know, FIFA teaching how to do math instead of, you know, number lines or something like that. I feel like this, the high schools around here should come here and take notes, <laughs> like anchoring what they're learning to real life and what they're interested yeah. in. So of we actually do have high schoolers who come during the summer um, because their program is obviously closed during the summer months. And so in the summer, we have a class of 16 to 18 year olds who can come and they are wild and fun and as much energy as we have out that window on a typical day, they just up the ante to where we go home absolutely exhausted from yeah. keeping up with them all day. It's so. like a summer camp for them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> um, so in the, in the mornings, you're doing a lot of the basic, which is the science, the math, mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe the reading, stuff like that, uh, the kind of the core groups that you would expect out mm -hmm. of a school. Um, then we get a break, <clears throat> we get lunch. And I love that you guys do have a break at like the 10, 15 mark. I feel like, like once again, all schools should do that. Give the kids a break, mm -hmm. get some steam off before you mm -hmm. go back into the classroom and sit down and that, those kinds of stuff. Um, so after lunch, lunch is provided here or people bring their own lunch. They bring their lunch. Okay. Um, we have eight or eight microwaves. <laughs> microwaves. Um, so they can all heat up their food if they need to, but we don't, we don't provide lunch. I imagine that's like 15 minutes of ding, ding yes. for right yes. before lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Just constantly going off there. Um, and then after lunch, you mentioned that there's a few different options. Sometimes you break away and go into, uh, unless you scoops. And mm -hmm. uh, then what are some of the other electives there? Um, so we have, they kind of change every semester. Um, and the students get to pick their electives. Um, this semester we have... Spanish and a cooking elective. Um, our like job and life skills classroom is a full functioning kitchen um, with like washer and dryer. So they learn cooking, you know, how to load a dishwasher, um, how to make a lunch when their parents are gone. Um, so cooking elective and then gym, which is like basketball, fun gym games, and then a fitness like workout class. I feel like you guys are hitting like every aspect of a successful life. You have to be able to do these things. Like you got to be mm -hmm. physically active. You got to get out. You got to have, you know, peers that you enjoy being. You know, the life skills of being mm -hmm. able to load the dishwasher at home, being a productive member of your family, those kinds of things. Yeah. What are some success stories that you guys have heard from your time here at Unless You? Maybe from individuals or from families that are seeing the results. I was I was actually just talking to a parent on a tour, and we were talking about. Um, students listening in class and how sometimes you know you think man like whatever I'm saying we're just we're totally zoned out like we're not paying any attention and I was talking to a parent several months ago and, and life skills and job skills have been talking about laundry and like okay we want to really help our parents obviously when we're home because you know all of our students still live at home and um, most of them will continue to live there how can we help our parents and help take care of things that they were able to do and um, she was like, you're never going to believe what he did this weekend. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, I have no idea. And she said, he did all of his laundry because he said, Miss Meredith said that we should, like, we should be helping our parents do that. And I was like, he was, he was listening? That, <laughs> yeah. that, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> like, I'm pumped about that. Um, and so even having that transition of like, we learned this on Wednesday. I'm going to do it on Saturday. That's a huge deal. Um, and you know, is it always gonna be perfect? No, but it's not, my laundry is not perfect when I do it at home, mm -hmm. you know, I've, but just the effort and going above and beyond to, okay, I'm going to make an intentional point to try to do these things and grow is incredible. Yeah. I'd and say, like, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Our, our goal at Unless You is to make our students as independent as possible. And, um, you know, for most of them that is not living independently. And that's kind of what a lot of people think. Um, but for some it is. Do, like taking the mm -hmm. initiative to do their laundry um, or it's putting their plate in the sink after they're done eating. Mm -hmm. um, small things like that um, is kind of our goal. And so whenever they can take what they're learning here and implement it at home is mm -hmm. it's what we want. Yeah, it's huge. And they feel a sense of pride from that. They're getting totally. acknowledgement from their family. Oh my gosh, you're doing that. Mm -hmm. You're doing yeah. laundry. Now I 
hate doing laundry. I have piles of it. You know? <laughs> so I definitely understand. Um, but you know, the parents to see that kind of un, yeah. unprovoked and coming home from school and it's like, they're mm -hmm. doing their own dishes and loading the dishwasher, um, has got to be very rewarding for the individual and the family there. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of a feedback loop for that. Totally. You mentioned that most of the uh, attendees here at school live with their family. Mm -hmm. um, do you hear a chatter that of individuals that want to get their own place? Is that a topic that comes up sometimes? We have one student that lives independently. Um, I think for most of our students and families, that's just not really a goal. Mm. Um, so. It's not something that you yeah. hear like, yeah, we don't, I don't hear, we don't hear about it a lot here. I hear about um, it a lot at the state level of, you know, being in your own apartment, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of new waivers are going that way. A lot of money's being, um, issued over there, mm -hmm. uh, kind of getting out of the three person group homes, more living with your family mm -hmm. or, or in your own place kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a big thing that, uh, the state's getting, getting behind right yeah. now. So which is, know. which is totally awesome and great. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think that that's not a goal for a lot of our families. And so that's kind of why we don't hear it, but. Um, but what you guys are doing here leads to if that individual does want to have their own yeah, place, they have the skills to do that. Right. So it's like a building block that, you know, if they want to in the future, they've got these, these core, mm -hmm. you know, things that they can do right. there. Yeah. So, um, is there another success story that really pops up to you guys? And I'll circle back on that. I'll give you a little bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to think about it, but something that just kind of pops to my mind, it's like one of my favorite things to see is whenever we have typically our older students who have maybe sat at home for 10, 15, 20 years and have had no like mental stimulation or like social engagement. Um, and whenever they come and just like slowly over the months, like they start to become their old selves mm -hmm. and their parents are just like, Oh my gosh, we have not seen Scott like this since he was in high school. And like, mm -hmm. no wonder he hasn't been like this since he was in high school. Like he was, you know, around his friends and people like him and he was being stimulated every day. Um, and then to just going to like sit on a couch for, for years. Um, but that's, that's really cool to be able to see students just like come to life again. Yeah. Come out of their shell um, there. Yeah. I, I've heard stories where, you know, maybe the individual and parents are a little bit frustrated. Um, you know, the, the child's not getting out of the home, that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, stress for the family. Mm -hmm. And my first thing is you guys got to get involved, yeah. you know, like what organizations are you guys going to during the day? Mm -hmm. What, what things are you guys working on? Um, that's an awesome success story for for that older gentleman mm -hmm. uh, getting back to his roots. It reminds yeah. me of like if somebody's a little bit older and then they hear a song that takes them back and they start yeah, dancing, okay. uh, just getting back to to who they are. Yeah. Um, what is the current uh, or what do you try and aim for the the staff to student ratio? So someone might say, you know, yes, my my child is is interested in going there, but I want to make sure they're safe and that there's a pro you know proper appropriate staff uh, level there. Um, so in our, our class, oops. I mean, that's Miss um, Lindy calling in. <laughs> right, right. Hot mic. <laughs> she knows we're in her office. <laughs> right. Um, uh, we'll give that a second. Maybe sorry. we can just uh, press the In our classrooms, we have max 12 students. Yeah. Um, and then one lead teacher, and we like to have one at least one floater um or teaching assistant um and then in post place which we have not mentioned but post place is our program for students with multi abilities and in there they receive one-on-one -on -one care tell me about that we since we haven't talked post place mm -hmm. yes um so in our typical program all of our students um, are fairly independent as far as you know toileting um, feeding those sorts of things. Um, and we were not able before this building to serve, um, those have students. bigger challenges, yes. mm -hmm. um, which it is just such a huge need. Um, and Lindy really, really wanted to be able to serve at least a few of those students and families. Um, and so whenever we moved into the building, um, last summer, we started post place and we started it three days a week, um, and have, slowly grown um, as of January to five days a week. And we serve five students a day in there, five or six. Uh, yeah. Um, and same overall 
goal and mission that we have with Unless You, but in there, those students receive one-on-one -on -one care, and um, it's been so amazing to be able to serve those families. Yeah. Um, that would be more of my family members. So she okay. is nonverbal. Um, she can't, she has cerebral palsy. Um, and the doctors say that she functions at a very early childhood level. Mm -hmm. Um, so she needs one-on-one -on -one care yeah. with her and we have caregivers, a great team, uh, that's with her around the clock, 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And she lives in her own home, but she would need something like that here. Yeah. So it's great to see that you guys are, are kind of, <clears throat> uh, working with all different individuals that mm -hmm. have, no matter what their challenges is, whether, whether it's more involved or whether they're more independent there. Yeah. So, what does the eligibility and enrollment look like? So I'm just thinking like for my aunt, could she come to Unless You? And what are the requirements for getting into Unless You? And do you guys have open spaces currently? Yeah, so we do have open spaces currently. Um, there is a wait list for Post Place because it is more of the one-on-one -on -one care. Um, but you know, our goal is always to, to serve those families. And so, um, Lindy continues to dream and to hope and to, to pray through what does that look like in the future for these families? Because, um, and we actually had a, I think one of our parents in post place said she, she's so grateful for it because even within the special needs community, some of those families can feel marginalized. Um, and so providing a place where they are loved and they're cared for and to give respite for some of those families during the day is huge. Um, as far as our other classrooms go, there are openings just depending on the day. Um, and we've been working on our summer rotations and we are packed to the brim for the summer. But that's a great thing. You know, we're excited about that. And I think um, as someone who didn't know much about Unless You this time last year um, and then came on board and on staff, it's been really neat to see um, the interest and just the knowledge of who we are and the services we provide just through the building opening um, and how many new families we've had in the last year. I mean, it's been incredible to yeah. see. So now when you sign up, is it signing up for a semester or a year? Or is it for a day or a, a week? Like yeah. So they sign up um, for a semester, you know, and you would come in and like earlier I did, um, we did a tour and we did an interview. Um, and then we kind of work with the family to figure out the best place for that student. But they would come in, you know, sign up for the semester, but a lot of our students, once they sign up, they're, they're locked in. Yeah. So they um, want to be here. They want to yeah. be here. They, they make here. friends. They want to go yes. see their friends. They love seeing their teachers mm -hmm. uh, and just getting out and being happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what is the cost to the consumer? So depending on the days you come, it depends on the cost. So, um, but it, it would be like kind of, um, I want to say like a private school or it, it maybe not that ex expensive, but there are some costs to the family Yes, for going to college basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we are a nonprofit, but all of our families pay tuition. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but some of our students come five days a week, some come two days a week. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of up to them and it's up to our availability. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be flexible there also mm -hmm. what the individual wants. If they want yeah. to come for so many days or they want so many supports or they or they need right. Postmates, it may be a little bit more, uh, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Post post place, I said Postmates yes. as a company. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. So if someone is interested, they could call and make an appointment to, to have a tour and have an introduction mm -hmm. and kind of find detail that out yes. uh, during that tour. Yep. Very cool. Um, there are spots open. So if you're interested, please give them a call. I'm sure there's, a, we'll go ahead and put the website in the chat, unless you dot org. Mm -hmm. And we have a student interest yeah, form online. Yeah. There's a student interest form. They can complete that. And then one of the staff will reach out and set up an interview and a tour. Um, and we've been doing, I feel like we've been doing nonstop tours for the last like <laughs> month, just, which again is a great blessing yeah. for us. Um, to, to meet these families. And a lot of the families will say, kind of like what you were saying earlier, we, we haven't had any option since they graduated high school. Um, and especially with COVID, even our, our students now, who they were at home for a little bit, I mean, Lindy's goal was to always get Unless You back open as soon as she could because she knew the importance mm. of having our students back with their peers and back in their routine. And she um, did it well and she did it safely and she did it very intentionally. But she knew how important it was for them to not be at home um, during the pandemic. And so as our students continue to come back now, it's been really cool to see even that growth for them from when they were at home kind of reemerging and taking full advantage of those friendships, those electives, yeah. and um, just the fun they have officially being back to 
to normal and, and their version of normal. I think we've all kind of felt it. It's mm -hmm. like, and I've spoken with families and individuals that are like, yeah, for that year and a half, I kind of digressed uh, mm -hmm. on my goals. And so getting back out there, working again from yeah. the bottom up, um, you know, being around people is so necessary. I felt it for like a year and a half. Yeah. I like talking with people. It's like I couldn't go play hockey, couldn't go meet people. I was suffering. <laughs> so glad that we're hopefully we're getting out of this. Um, so if you would, we would talk a little bit about the new location. So you guys have continued to grow. This building is amazing. Um, and it almost sounds like you guys might need a little bit bigger building with all this. <laughs> You're not wrong. Tours. <laughs> um, so as much as our staff has grown in the year, our, our student population has also grown, um, almost doubled, which is amazing. Um, Lindy, I think she'd be comfortable sharing this. Um, you know, kind of had a five year plan of once we're in this building and settled five years from now, Lord, I will revisit and kind of see where we're going to go from there. But I think she's starting to realize that we're pretty much full. Yeah, maybe five <laughs> um, years comes down to two. Yeah, years. right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I think that post place, we really want to be able to serve mm -hmm. more of those families. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of all of our our heart and kind of where we're we're thinking now, just because it is such a need. Mm -hmm. um, so, kind of the vision. You think there are multiple locations throughout the state and throughout the country? Is this kind of like a national uh, United Ability or UCP? Um. Yes and no. So I think that short term goal um, would be a second location in Birmingham, mm -hmm. um, just because this is kind of where our heart is and we know the community and we know that there's mm -hmm. a real need around here. Um, we have families that drive, you know, an hour, 50 minutes, mm -hmm. um, really from last Christmas, we like delivered stuff to all of their houses. And I forget how many like counties and towns it was, but I mean, crazy. Um, so I think that would be our short, short term goal, second location in Birmingham. Um, whether that's specifically for post play students or just in general, unless you, I don't know. Um, and then Lindy, um, has hired all of us. Lindy was doing everything, um, all by herself until I came along and then Meredith and Paula and Lisa. Um, but she would like to transition kind of into more consulting. Um, she has people that reach out to her mm -hmm. all the time, wanting to start either like start an unless you or start something similar. Mm -hmm. um, and she's so knowledgeable. So, and literally did this from the ground up. Um, so she kind of just knows like mm -hmm. all the ins and outs of starting a nonprofit um, class transition. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, I think she will, she kind of already has a little bit. Um, yeah, and that might be the yeah. best use of her time mm -hmm. um, to try and help others yeah. get this up and running yeah. in their in their cities Absolutely. and, and local. So I, I don't know if like it'll be a an actual franchise that um, I or hope just so. her like empowering empowering <laughs> people to to do something. Yeah, um, because if the need's there and she's getting calls from other you yeah. know, families are wanting to start it locally. Um, I, I say take off with it. You know, it'd be yeah. really cool to see. Um, are you guys currently hiring or adding volunteers here at Unless You? So if somebody wants to get involved, how can they do that? Yeah, so on the same website that you would go to for an interest form for students, there's also volunteer interest forms and employment interest forms. Um, and you just kind of go through the same process. You fill it out and then someone will reach out um, to y'all. We always love volunteers. Volunteers are our lifeblood, especially during the day, um, because you know we have so many students and we want to interact with them and we want to serve them the best way possible. But you know, like for us, like we're just two people. Volunteers help us go above and beyond and do that. Everything from scoops to helping with electives, to even helping with lunches, is huge for us um, because it frees us up to actually work one on one with students as well. So. And I would we say would if, love people. if you're interested in pursuing some type of uh, profession in this community, start with volunteering and internship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great way to help out the community and gain experience, get your foot in the door, as you've mentioned, uh, kind of going that route. Are there, um, let's talk a little bit about donating. If there's um, an individual or a family uh, or an organization that's looking to support your cause, how does that happen? Uh, and what does that look like for them? Yeah. Um, so you right now our biggest need is just like kind of donating towards our general programming um we've been like before we were, we were at shades mountain church for six years using their sunday school classrooms um 
And so we just like moving into the building, we had no idea like how expensive it would be to um, not only add double our staff size, um, but also just like the cost it takes to keep up a building this size and maintenance issues that come up and that sort of thing. So um, just like our overhead, um, we always need support with that. Um, and then you can donate specifically like for student scholarships. Um, and then our third need really is funding towards post place. Um, so that program we like want to expand, but it's um, an expensive service to provide, mm -hmm. um, you know, staffing at least one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with each student. Um, it's expensive. So funding for that um, is really needed. And uh, are there any donors that you'd like to give a shout out to? I'm sure, I'm sure like all of them there. But yeah. Because um, I've seen uh, some names on, on the classrooms here. So it looks yeah. like you can sponsor a class or you yeah. know, those types of things. Um, we have a lot of really amazing, generous donors. Um, it's like the favorite part of my job. Um, just like getting to see the community and individuals support and like wanting to to support unless you. Um, and some of them, you know, have a connection and they're like, mm -hmm. have a sibling or family member that has passed away and they're like, what we would have given for there to have been a program like unless you whenever our sister was alive. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then like also just individuals that have no connection, um, but are really passionate about supporting people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so cool and rewarding to see how supportive um, people are and just how generous like it is it is really amazing and the Lord has totally provided um, the people um, to help us help us keep going because we could not do it without the support of, of our community yeah um, you hear stories where uh, like we've done a few interviews and broadcasts with the restaurant owners um, and you know they have an initiative to hire X amount of people or percentage um, from the disability community yeah. and what they what they've noticed is like when they when they have somebody come in and they hire them full time, the t the change in the restaurant really takes hold. Mm -hmm. It goes from less of a restaurant and a business to more of a family atmosphere. Yeah. Um. And I, and I see that you know you guys are doing that here. Do you guys also do like um traveling during the day, like during the summers where it's outside of the unless you area here? Are you talking like field trips or taking? Yeah. Um. So before COVID, we did field trips all the time. Um. And I've kind of put that on halt for the past two years, but we're slowly starting to get more out into the community. And um, our one of our donors, we brought them ice cream to, to like their office, and that was really fun um, and something that maybe we can do later on down the road. But um, yeah, we, we love getting out into the community. And Scoops has, unless you Scoops, has mm -hmm. just been like such an awesome avenue to welcome people from the community inside our walls yeah and that makes a really interesting point because most of the time you'll hear like my aunt she loves to get out in the community she loves mm -hmm. to go for a ride yeah. she doesn't necessarily like people coming into her house it's kind of her right. place yeah. um but i think it's very important to do that for other families to visit with her those kinds mm -hmm. of things and unless you scoops provides the opportunity for the general public to come in and interact mm -hmm. um, with the individuals here in in college in the school um where they're where they're comfortable yeah. Uh, uh, instead of, you know, supposedly my aunt going and being in a new environment, uh, mm -hmm. which she may not like. Totally. Right. So really cool. Now, see, Mary Grace totally skipped over the horses and like our new venture and getting out because that to me is like our big, like we're diving into the community in a way that yes. <laughs> is totally different than even pre-COVID. Yes. Um, so, little blurb. Um, I love horses and obviously love our students and our population and have always dreamed and thought that it would be so amazing to merge the two. A few weeks ago, I asked Lindy, I was like, at our second location, can we please just have some horses? I, I will run it. I will do everything. I'll take care of the horses. I will provide the lessons. Like, and she was like, sure. Like if you want to do it, sure. Um, but a few months ago, I started taking riding lessons at a place in Birmingham called Ford and Faith Ranch. And it's in Bessemer. Um, Come to find out, the lady that started it um, ran the equine program at the Alabama Association of Deaf and Blind mm -hmm. for years, and so her heartbeat is really our population too. Um, and she's past certified, which is like teaches special equestrian lessons, um, and she trains instructors to be path certified also. 
Um, and she's like a huge dreamer and visionary. And so we started talking the first day I was out there for a lesson and she was like, we got to get the students out here. Like, and I was like, yeah, thinking years down the road. And, um, I, two weeks ago she came and toured the, toured the building and she was like, we got, we got to make this happen. I was like, yeah, we do. Um, but it's always crazy, but it's really been kind of crazy. And Lindy's mm -hmm. out. Um, Meredith's about to be out on maternity leave. And so um, I was like, kind of, when are you thinking, thinking the fall? And she was like, let's make it happen next week. <laughs> wow. Um, and so last week we took 10 students out to Bessemer to a ranch. And um, we don't have buses or transportation. So they all loaded in my car and another teacher's. <laughs> and, um, and it was amazing. Um, it was, I am kind of felt surreal. Um, yeah. What was course, the students' reaction there? Um, it was awesome. So the students that we took all like were super interested, and we got a lot of interest from the parents wanting their student to be able to go. Um, but we could only take ten, and um, it was amazing. There was one student that was pretty anxious, and within twenty minutes of her being there, she had like totally warmed up. And horses, kind of like all animals, can just like bring out a different side in people. Um, and there's so much that we can learn from being around them and riding. And um, Elizabeth, the founder of Ford and Faith, um, it's also a faith-based place. So like our mission kind of really aligns. Really meshed together and, um, the two organizations. Yeah, there. so I, I'm, I'm super excited about it um, and love horses. So yeah, so I, I've never ridden a horse. I grew up around horses. I was uh, raised on a farm. My dad's a large animal vet, never ridden yeah. a horse. Really? How crazy is that? Yeah. Well, you can come out with us on a Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking we should go and do a broadcast live from there with the students sure. you know, interacting with the horses. But yeah. yeah, it's kind of like a service animal at that point where it can mm -hmm. bring, make, make you feel comfortable, kind of bring you mm -hmm. out and want to be around the horses. And it takes a special kind of horse, I think, to be able to mm -hmm. interact as well with new people all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. You kind of have to get that trust there. I don't think the students wanted to come back. They were, <laughs> they were wanting to hang out for a while. Yeah. So, and the smiles in the pictures were huge yeah well we definitely want to do a broadcast on that for sure <laughs> um you Some mentioned good content <laughs> yeah you mentioned something earlier about the donations so you can donate specifically to um scholarships for tuition so there are scholarships available um for some individuals or maybe for some families if the donating is there um and that yes. can come out during the tour and, and kind of talking on financial needs there okay. so don't you know if you're thinking about getting involved with unless you um, don't think that it's out of your reach, um, but make that first mm -hmm. call and, and see what that can look like for you and your family. Totally. Um, and if you are interested in donating, um, you can donate on our line, on, on our line, <laughs> on our like website, on our website, right. <laughs> there's a donation page and you can kind of select like where specifically you would like your donation to go to. Okay. I think donors really like that of having a look because when you give money, like you hear it sometimes at checkout or that's Publix, do you want to donate to this and that? Mm -hmm. And then you get articles that come out and like, well, those organizations are so bloated that it never really yeah. gets to the person that it's supposed to. Right. And so if you have a little bit more control over where you want that donation to go specifically to, to this program or this program, I think donors really enjoy that. Yeah. Well, and if you want to learn more, I would say too, about unless you and just who we are and really kind of get a feel for our personality. We have our big fundraising event coming up in May, unless you got talent. And we have 10 acts, eight, eight acts. Um, and it's our students pair with local professionals, everything from dancing to singing to art. Last year we had karate. I mean, and so it was down at the Lyric Theater on May the 14th mm -hmm. at 630. Mm -hmm. Man, I was really worried I was gonna mess up one of those details. <laughs> Um, but we're excited. We're hoping for a packed house and that's a great opportunity to get to know us better, but also get to know our students and who we serve. And it is a fundraising event as well. And so, um, the more the merrier, we would love to have everybody come check it out. That's a huge fundraising event, the Lyric it's, Theater. Yeah. It, so we had our first one, um, like two weeks before COVID, um, and packed out house. It was amazing. It was kind of the last push before we moved into the building as far as fundraising and, I think they raised fifty or sixty thousand dollars that night. Um, there's like a text to give portion throughout the event um, where you donate towards your favorite act, and then there's a People's Choice Award. Yeah. Um, of the like act that has raised the most money, um, but it is just it's really magical um, and a great opportunity for for people outside that might not know a ton about unless mm -hmm. you to 
to come and kind of see what we're all about. Yeah, spreading that awareness, which mm -hmm. I think is so important to the yeah. bigger um, society and community there. Yeah. Um, how do the kids enjoy it? I'm, I'm sure they're like planning their acts. I'm sure they're getting really excited about it. Oh yeah. Um, so they, most of them love any chance to get on, on stage <laughs> yeah. um, and be the center um, of attention. Um, and so they, they love it and it's just an awesome opportunity to be able to display some of their talents. Um, cause we have some like really talented, um, musicians and mm -hmm. like artists. And so it's really cool to be able to like feature and spotlight them. Yeah. And for most people, they'd never think they're going to be on uh, a stage. I, I don't imagine myself on mm -hmm. stage at the Larry yeah. theater, you know, right. and that's a huge life accomplishment Totally. Uh, to be kind of set front, front and center there. Um, showing off your skill yeah so that's really cool for them to do um as we kind of wrap up here is there anything that we haven't talked about that you think an individual or a family could benefit from hearing meredith i'll start with you um i would just say i think from a staff perspective and just from getting to know our students and our families um, if this is something that you think that your student and your child would enjoy or benefit from let us know um, we would love to you know, not just partner with your student, but partner with your family. Um, I think that's one of the really cool things about Unless You Use It. No matter how big I think we've grown in the last year or the last seven years, um, we get to know the families and the parents, the individuals and the siblings. And um, we want to, to love your family as a whole. And so um, if, if that's something you're interested in, if, if, if our program interests you at all, don't hesitate to reach out and just come talk to us um, and let us kind of share what the Lord is doing here um, and, and Lindy's vision for, for this program because um, if there's anything I think that we all know as a staff and just being here day in and day out is that he's doing really big things and we're just pumped to be a part of it um, and very humble to be a part of it. And so we would love to share that with y'all. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Mary Grace, is there anything you'd like to say? Um. I think that if you aren't, you know, if you're listening to this and it's like, oh, wow, like I wish that my child could go to, to Unless You or, you know, kind of feeling discouraged, like I live in the middle of nowhere and there are no services for, for my student, um, still reach out to us, mm -hmm. but also like reach out to Lindy and she can empower you mm -hmm. to start something like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, because our like quote, and motto around here is, um, and kind of like foundational, Lindy started unless you around this quote, um, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. And it's a Dr. Seuss quote from Lorax. And, um, Lindy really believes that, you know, we're all called to do big things and that if you're not going to do it, then who is? Um, so, so yeah. I think um, there are people maybe in urban areas or individuals or moms that want to do something and feel that urge, mm -hmm. but maybe need to talk with somebody, need a little bit yeah. of direction there. So pick up the phone, send the email, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what capacity you want to be involved with, unless you, whether that's you, you want to attend during the day mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, maybe open up another one. Um, you know, those, those types of resources are available here uh, in Birmingham. So, really? yeah. Well, thank you very much for, for spending the morning with us today and telling everybody about what Unless You Does. I'm going to give a shout out, Adley. I hope you're going to be on stage at the Lyric Theater. <laughs> I, I would like to see your act. <laughs> uh, but I hope you enjoyed today's episode. So. <laughs> we miss you, Adley. <laughs> at this point, we'll go ahead and wave at our respective cameras and we'll say, see you guys on Thursday. And Clifton will go Bye. ahead and take us out.